This channel is part of the History Hit Network. Can I help you? Yeah, I work for ICI, but I'm not the press officer, so I can't speak to you about it. Dioxin is a very persistent substance. It probably lasts for centuries, but certainly for decades. In a way, it's a sort of perfect poison. Most of us are consuming foods that have dioxins in them. The dioxins sort of get onto vegetation, they're produced in a whole variety of processes. They're in the air, they settle out on the grass, animals graze the grass, and um, the dioxins then enter the meat um, that people eat and also get into milk and cream and various dairy products. We've got 56 acre just over and it were a dairy farm till Maff stopped us milking and they came one day and said to say we've dark training as milk and we can't take any more milk. When they walked in they said do you know anything about dioxins? So we said no we've never heard anything. So they said well your milk's been tested and you have found that there's levels of dioxin in your milk that shouldn't be there. And your milk cannot be marketed. One day you're happily milking away, you know, next day you're finished. It's just as simple as that. Well, they said we could have a blood test, which we took up after, I think it was about a year after we had the blood test. What were the levels of dioxin in you? About two and a half times more than what it should be. We're still putting chlorine into products, including one of the most nasty of all, although it looks so harmless, is PVC. It's part of our throwaway society. Plastic bags, plastic spoons, throwaway razors, um, apart from a lot of the things that are actually in our homes. When that substance is burnt in a medical waste incinerator, in a solid waste incinerator, uh, or in a house fire, any fire, then it produces dioxins.
just to show how toxic dioxin is. These two tablets, if they were made of dioxin, would contain the maximum tolerable lifetime dose for every man, woman and child in the whole of Britain. That's according to the latest American and European research. History Hit is an award-winning streaming platform built by history fans for history fans. Our goal is to bring you award-winning documentaries that cover the events and figures that have shaped our world all in one place. Travel with us to the fascinating world of prehistoric Scotland or uncover the lives of the people who called Pompeii home. We also aim to bring you the stories and legends that shaped our world through our award-winning podcast network. Sign up now for a free trial and Timeline fans get 50% of their first three months. Just be sure to use the code TIMELINE at checkout. Dioxins are the most potent dysregulators of human chemistry that we've, we've ever studied. The average person in Britain is getting a dose of dioxins which is very close to where you'd expect to see effects in animals. That's the average person. It means, in, in this essence, you've shifted the whole population across uh, because you've, you're putting into their bodies chemicals which make it more difficult for them to fight off disease, more likely to get cancer, more likely to get reproductive problems, more likely to get uh, neurological problems, behavioral problems. The UK experts have in fact formed a view on them and said that um, the dioxin levels in the UK, the levels being taken into the body by ingestion, in particular in food, are not such as to cause concern. They don't seem to have taken much of it into account, particularly the more recent research on the non-cancer effects of dioxin. And uh, in the end we have this thousandfold discrepancy between what the United States consider to be an acceptable daily intake and what the UK consider to be an acceptable daily intake and uh, um, that is puzzling.
think it's very crude chemistry. You're literally burning everything that society makes. And to, to come up with one machine that can burn everything together and control the emissions uh, is, I think, wishful thinking. We've had some fetal tissue analysed from the northwestern region. This is the first time we've measured these things in, in the UK. It's quite clear that these substances are already present in the womb, in the baby, while it's forming. The fetus, if you take the British level, is taking in twice as much, on average, as uh, it should be. Um, and if you take the American level of acceptability, it's about 2,000 times too much. The most vulnerable time of your life is when you're forming in the womb. If you start to disrupt hormone levels of the fetus while it's in the womb, particularly of the sex hormones such as testosterone, then you are likely to produce permanent deformity. <coughs> the most efficient way of getting rid of dioxin from your body is to lactate and produce milk. That does get rid of quite a lot of dioxin. And there is evidence that the firstborn in the family does get more uh, via this route than, than the more subsequent uh, the children. In Germany, We've had paediatricians tell women to limit their breastfeeding to three or four months because of their concerns about dioxin. When you tell a woman to limit her breastfeeding, it's a very radical thing to do. It's far less draconian, far less radical to take the chlorine out of the bleaching of paper, to take the chlorine out of the chemical industries. They're not built incinerators. Bad little bag of eels we've got. Some of the lads actually uh, do eat them and they, they smoke them. They're very tasty, apparently. It's quite a decent one. Um, you can you can jelly them or whatever, but I think smoking's the most popular. Some of the lads do that. Nice little eel. Western Marsh Lagoon is an outdated and very crude method 
of dealing with the discharges it receives. The discharges it's received are amongst the most harmful substances licensed in, in the, as I say, in the European Union. Uh, it's basically a hole in the ground which is designed to leak and it does leak. It's an appalling way to have actually got rid of waste over this number of years. And although maybe when they started 30 years ago, they had not so much idea about how toxic these substances are, certainly for the last decade, it's been quite clear that we're dealing with a highly poisonous set of substances. Okay. So, one of the good things about the world is we've got this sort of information on, so we can have a go through the file and see uh, what's on. Where do you rest? Well, it's numbered alphabetically. ICI starts there oh, and finishes somewhere down there. So, the oh, best thing nice. to do. A lot of the waste streams use the same plant. Mm. Well, this is the actual PVC process. Now, all we've got to do is try and find the uh, free application. How has it happened that ICI has been allowed to dump toxic waste into an unlined lagoon for 30 years? It is a, an operation whose very nature is subject to control by other regulatory authorities under the legislation. HMIP does not have the responsibility in that area. AK, what was this? Well, the one for the lagoons is actually this one here. Which is, um The report would have been submitted just after I left, but having talked to the inspector, it's certain that she didn't actually see the report and that it's obviously sat on somebody's desk. We've been working with HMIP and the NRA since 1990 to, to see the closure of, the, of this particular site and uh, we, we, we have no difficulty in communicating information backwards and forwards to each other. Did you know that, in fact, the NRA have never seen ICI's report on the level of contaminants on that site? They never set eyes on it until we supplied it to them. Well, I'm surprised. One of the minor improvements that we had done in, in uh, my time of policing the site was actually put a, a ditch in around the entire length of the lagoon. We can see part of it along here where the little green pumping station is. Uh, that was to pick up material that you could actually see leaking out across the sort of area to, to, towards the river. Um, it picks up a percentage of it, it picks up what's visible, but the vast majority of the, uh, the contamination is actually going down into the aquifer and into the river that way. Um, you do still see, however, in certain areas the grass hasn't recovered and you have to get up to quite high levels of contamination to kill grass off like that.
when the lagoons dry out in summer, there's a fair amount of sedimentary particles, very fine sand and silt, gets blown across the, blown across the lagoon. Uh, if you let this dewater without putting some sort of cap on, then you're going to get sediments contaminated with dioxins and all other sorts of nasties blowing around the local environs. And will it pose a danger to people living around here? I can't see how the actual lagoon itself, which is quite a large structure, is going to be dealt with other than being left in situ. I hate to use the term toxic time bomb, it's one that's often overused, but certainly behind us there we've got all the makings of, a, of something that's got to be there and managed for, for generations to come. What is going to happen when it dries out and the dioxins could be emitted through the air back down to land? Does it then become your responsibility? No, it doesn't. Our responsibilities are to do with particular defined industrial processes, with the emissions from those processes. They are defined in law. But this is a nonsense. The waste has come from the industrial process. It's been put in the land. It's going to dry out on your instructions that they're going to leave the Western Marsh Lagoon to dry out and no more dumping must take place. And then the dioxins will be airborne and it's still not your responsibility. Under the law, we have responsibilities which are closely refined, defined. Our responsibilities are, from emission, are in respect of emissions from the process per se. There were several soil samples taken, one from this field in the background here, and uh, this particular result is quite interesting because it had 115 um, parts per trillion. It is at a level which is rather higher than was uh, used to stop milk production. HMIP has no reason to believe that the emissions are coming from the process such as would result in the contamination that you are describing. It is an industrial area and uh, dioxins have been being produced over many years from all sorts of processes. Bonfires, for example, are a source of dioxins. We're talking about massive amounts of dioxins mm. that ICI has admitted to. Mm. 
depth. We're not talking about dioxins of the level caused by a bonfire. What has HMIP done about that? HMIP has, has no involvement with that lagoon. The responsibility for that lagoon is not HMIPs. But the bottom line of the position is that uh, these dioxins in that location are not seen to be threatening the food chain. The laboratory that did these tests in Germany uh, advised me that um, if they found levels like this in Germany then uh, they would consider removing the topsoil um, as contaminated. They certainly wouldn't allow any uh, food production to go on on it. What do you think ought to be done now in light of those samples? Well I feel there should be a full government inquiry. In the ICI's case, do you think you've protected the public? I am. I'm very confident that uh, we have protected the public uh, so far as our responsibilities go, that we have protected them in a proper manner. At the present moment, they're about 5 to 50 times higher than the level we would normally expect in a river of this nature. What has the NRA done to clean this river up? What the NRA has done is we looked into the possibilities of minimising the effects and we set up a project specifically with this and we looked into many different ways of cleaning up the dachshunds from the river. But at the end of that research, we came back to the conclusion that the best and safest option was to allow the river to clean itself up naturally. Well, if they're saying that the River Dole will clean itself up of dioxins, what they're really referring to is the fact that the chemicals are likely to be washed further downstream. So they're not going to be as concentrated, if you like. They're just going to be diluted and dispersed. So where have they gone? Until we have the results of the further monitoring, I can't answer that accurately. Where do you think they've gone? They've obviously gone downstream, but the levels at which they've gone downstream, we do not know, and they will be much lower than they are here. Which means it's going to end up further down the river or indeed out in the North Sea, where again it will be available for uptake and bioconcentration in the food chain. The bill remains fatally flawed. The cost-benefit duties imposed on the agencies fundamentally undermine their central purpose and their aim. We have seen commercial interests actually being set ahead of the interests of the environment. Cement kilns are designed to make cement. If something goes wrong when you're making cement, it's no big deal. You, lose, you waste some lime. But if something goes wrong when you're making cement and you're burning hazardous waste at the time, it's a serious problem. Mm. Mm. 
I can test it quite often and I'll find that I have a very sore throat for perhaps 24 hours afterwards and very itchy eyes, it, it makes, makes your eyes itch. Are you saying that people's health and itchy eyes are not related to what you're doing here? I'm saying that the evidence from all the testing around the plant is by other people, not just by us, is that our operations are not damaging anybody's health. They said that, uh, that as the milk was, was going uh, wholesale and was being diluted uh, with everyone else's milk at a large dairy, uh, the amount of dioxins in it didn't matter anyway. It would be diluted down in the, in the total supply. And what do you think about that? I think it's coming to a, a pretty pass when, when they have to dilute somebody's milk down. We have to rely on measurements made, usually under ideal circumstances, usually when the company knows it's being monitored. Will the new agency still be relying on industry to police themselves? The system is one of them having responsibilities and the inspectorate uh, being charged with ensuring that they deliver their responsibilities, uh, just as the inspectorate does now. Where we are now is in the middle of an area known as the Holford Brine Field, and in all directions where we stand now, unseeing to us, are large caverns below the surface. A whole series of three to 350 meter high cavities. These are the same kinds of volumes as maybe St Paul's Cathedral, but the potential problem. Just come and just talk to you now. Sorry, can I help you? Yeah, I work for ICI, but I'm not the press officer, so I can't speak to you. Can can we help you? Yes, we're doing uh, filming here um, on public right of way, as I understand. Uh, no, it's private, it's property. There's a public right of way sign down there. Yeah, we we'll might get the manager, I think. Yeah. All right. I'm from uh, ICI. Yes. And uh, this is ICI property, so. Uh, we understood that it was a walkway, public right of way. It, it probably is a public right of way as well. Yeah. Well, we are allowed to walk down it then, surely? Yes. Fine. So, as I say, since 1968, ICI in this area have disposed of somewhere in excess of 330,000 tonnes of these toxic residues. This material is dangerous forever.
the potential problems are that this material can actually migrate laterally along these. Here you are in an area that it is known that water, see, water migrates from this area over fairly long periods of time and actually issues out into the Irish Sea. Now if that kind of thing happens, then we really are in trouble. But how would we know whether it's moving or not? Well, in the normal circumstances, you would expect that there would be detailed monitoring. Unfortunately, my reading of the working plan that ICI have developed for this area, there is very little actual monitoring takes place. Effectively, we have ICI being told, get on with it, you tell us if anything's going wrong. The success of the system does not depend on them putting their hands up. The success of the system depends on our skill and ability uh, in enforcing and ensuring that um, if um, departures from the stated requirements are taking place uh, that they come to our attention uh, and you may be assured that in that circumstance we will take appropriate action. If the monitoring is weak, if the enforcement is weak, then the regulations don't protect you. Uh, without the monitoring, without the enforcement, the regulations mean nothing. There's no doubt that the long-term solution is to stop the production of chlorine and find alternatives. For most of the things that are produced by the organic chlorine industry, there are alternatives anyway. It's up to the public to say, if you're clever enough to make these materials, you must be clever enough to dismantle them safely. <laughs>